All right, everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Himanshu, and we are on our journey to understanding Salesforce development and learning more about it. Right? In the last video, we understood about sharing settings, sharing and security, and also the with sharing without sharing keywords. Right? And we'll proceed ahead before we reach into a position wherein we are good to start database operations, which is right probably very, very soon to the videos that we are currently doing. It's important to understand objects. It's important to understand Salesforce objects, right? So for those of you who might have any C, C++ or Java experience, you, you know that you create objects, right? You, you create objects to define an entity. However, Salesforce has its own object that's called S objects. Right. If I were to quickly take you to the Salesforce org and if we go to the object manager here, you'll see that there's a list of objects which are either standard object or custom object. Right. So any and everything that you see listed here, be it standard or custom are objects essentially. And Salesforce has its own way of basically handling everything as objects. Correct. So if I were to do something like, let's say, let's go ahead and create a new Apex class and I'll say understanding objects so if i were to create this apex class and if i were to create a method right i could do something like account acc equals new account right what is account account is an object correct what is contact contact con equal to new contact contact is an object right so what is opportunity? Opportunity is an object. So these are all objects and they are basically nothing but S objects, right? S objects is short for Salesforce objects. And you'll see everywhere Salesforce talks about objects, they call it S objects. All right. So any object that can be stored on the lightning platform is termed as a Salesforce object or S object. Okay. What is that one thing that you see common in all of these declarations? They are all instantiated using the new keyword. So you can actually say that anything that is instantiated using the new keyword can be defined as a Salesforce object in Salesforce. Straightforward. That's it. So that's the first line right here. You can use the S object keyword to create an instance of any object you like. Right here, account is an S object. So we have used this keyword. We have said account ACC equal to new account. Right. Let's quickly check if I can do something like this. So S object equals new account. Is this something that Salesforce allows? Let's take a look at the console and you see that you are able to save your file without any errors. Right. Which means you have the S object parent object that is the native object of Salesforce and you can actually use to downcast it to any any object that you like here what we have done we have basically told the system that I want to create an S object which would be of type account right so that's the second line you can use type casting to it as well all right in case you do not know what kind of object is going to come up you can actually use the S object notation if you know what object it is you can directly use the name of the object that the way I've done it here all right. Now, when you create an object, I know database operations are coming up very soon. But for now, if I were to create a account record, right, I would have to populate all the fields and attributes. Yes. So how would I populate them? I would say account dot name equals Salesforce makes sense. Right. So that's the way I would assign a field. And then I would say, let's say insert account. Right. So what am I doing here? I'm basically instantiating that tells me that this is an S object. So far, so good. The second thing I've done here is I've typecasted. I've not really typecasted because I know which object is this. Right. The third thing is I'm trying to access a field using the dot operator. Correct. So I'm saying ACC dot name. Name is a field in account object and I'm assigning it a value. Right. So that's what the next few lines say that you can create an instance using the new keyword and you can access the fields using the dot operator. All right. So anything that you do using this nomenclature, you can understand ah, this is an S object that I'm dealing with. So if I'm dealing with an S object, I would have some properties or I would have some attributes that I can access using the dot operator. All right. But everything that has an instance, right, which is why I've added one note there. 
if you had to access something called custom labels so you can create labels in Salesforce for those of you who did not know if you wanted to keep something as a static value in Salesforce platform you can create a custom label right if I were to try creating a custom label here I'll try to show you by creating one custom label and I'll say max integers allowed let's say that's the name of my label right I'll just put spaces here and then your API name gets auto populated and I'll say 100 right I'll copy this label name and I'll say save so we talked about everything in Salesforce is a object right most of it but if I want to access a label I have to use the system class followed by the label class and then I have to use the name of my label using the dot operator so if I were to print it out I would get 100 as the result correct let's save it so if I try to save it here and let's say execute I'll say understanding objects dot understand obj and I try to execute it what should line 9 give me it should give me the result as 100 because that's the value that that custom label holds correct so this is 100 right here right however if you notice I did not have to instantiate to use this particular variable that is from the custom labels what does that tell you that tells you that labels are not custom are not custom are not objects s objects and that's the note right here that custom labels cannot be instantiated they are directly used by using the system class so they are not standard objects all right so that was a very quick short understanding of the s objects what you can do is you can take a look at the documentation to understand how can you access variables fields values play around with it a bit but that's that's good enough information for you to start database interactions which will be our next video all right i'll see you in the next one bye Thank you.